I've also got to clean the corners out of this scope mount. This, I guess it's a scope. Looks like it should be a scope mount right there. Just dropped in there quite a bit because I square I took the corners out of this scope mount and let this bracket sink straight down in there. Now it's hitting in the bottom underneath the receiver. I didn't take out this milling coming back. I didn't take it all the way out because I didn't know how how this was going to work. But I think if I took some more of that out, it would continue to sit down. Right now. That scope mount is only sitting in there about mm, uh, not much over a sixteenth of an inch. And that needs to go down about twice that far. So I need to because I can see this ramps up right there. I just need to clean that out. This if it's on the same line as this milling. It'll it'll lay in there pretty good, I think. I made this chisel out of a flat half inch chisel, a long time ago. I made it around, a real shallow round. It has really come in handy over the years. The thing about these target rifles. They, uh, these target rifle shooters, they like their straight grain. And you know what? It's a lot easier to, to sand and cut and mill than that real wild, crooked, pretty grain that I like so much. This stuff's a lot easier to work with. Theoretically, straight grain is more stable. But the size of the barrel on this 22, um, I don't think you could bend it. No matter what kind of stock you put on there, I don't believe it'd give. There's one little place down in the way down there in the bottom of this thing that the bottom back of the trigger. It's touching. It's leaving a little skint place right there. And it's pushing the whole rifle forward. Or it's putting pressure. It's not pushing it, but it's putting putting pressure on it. Alright, see down inside there? See where my pencil is touching? See a little mark there and there? Those two little skint places are the back of that. Right there and there are touching down inside there. That's what's making those two little skint places. something it's hitting something I think I'm gonna have to smoke that 
put some smoke on it because it's hitting something and I can't really really tell what it's hitting but it needs to uh, it needs to go forward nearly a half another half inch on that side I've got 0.575 and on this side Hmm, twenty thousandths more. It's got to come this way, ten thousandths. And I can see it. There's a, there's a little bitty, little tiny gap right in here. I can, I can tell it. If it would just scoot, I think it's this scope mount. If it would scoot over to that gap, it would lay in there and it would be centered. It would really make me feel better about it if it was scooted over. The only thing I can see this tight is this, this scope now. I've got to take officially 10 thousandths, but I'm thinking I'm going to take more like 15. The next thing i got to do is start being concerned and checking how tall this thing is to the bottom of the trigger guard because that thing has to be exactly the right thickness height to, uh, to go together like it does. Oh, I think I see what the problem is on this bolt release. There's a little pin, a little screw right there with a spring on it. And when you work the bolt release, this pushes that backwards. You have to hold your trigger back and push your bolt release forward, and it shoves that screw backwards. That little screw right there has to go backwards. And it's probably 3 sixteenths or more. And I've got that screw in a track going straight up and down. And it won't let it go backwards. I need to bring that track back a good quarter of an inch. And that would let this whole thing scoot back like it's supposed to do. Alright, that was my final pass with the machine for the barrel groove. Now the, the mark I put on this blue tape is a depth mark. So that, that's an easy reference, uh, just a quick way for me to look at it and say, okay, it's got to go down that much. It's, it's pivoting on something around the front of the, the action because I can write it is. There's something right in here that's hitting. Thing right in there is hitting. My bolt release, however, I, I milled it out a while ago. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't turn the camera on. I get so concerned sometimes with finding that one little spot where it's hitting that I forget I'm trying to film this. And and I, I relieved that bolt release just by chisel uh, by hand with a chisel, and it see it, it bounces back. It actually has spring to it, and it was jammed before it was pushed right up against the the receiver. Oh, I see a screw. I told you it was it was rocking on something, and it was right there. Check this out. You're gonna like this. See that little bitty compression of a screw? That is what it's rocking on. See that screw that screw right there? that's what it's hitting on and that's all it needs to go down it's just the thickness of that screw go figure <laughs> see as a stock maker you just take all the aha moments you can get you have to pull the trigger and push the bolt release forward and it's got a an extra little spring loaded travel it's got to go all the way to the front of that gap right there 
and it does. But you do have to have the trigger back to push that thing forward. 